Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Listen, if you're a guest, we're especially glad you're here and we welcome you today. John chapter 4. Uh, we're going to be looking at that chapter today, probably a lot of that, uh, a lot of that chapter today, uh, talking about a particular woman in this story. Um, you know, ladies, I, I want you to know that, that you're important to God's work. Uh, you're important to God's church. I grew up in a small church um, close to my home where I live on Liberty Hill. Uh, I grew up at Liberty Hill Baptist Church. That's where I was kind of, uh, that's where I, I guess I cut my teeth or whatever and learned about God and learned about Jesus and, and all those things, accepted Christ there, was baptized, and, and uh, it was a, a, a super special place to me, still is a super special place, although the church that I went to there is not really uh, the church. There's a church there, but it's kind of been the, the tornado hit it, and so they've redone it and all this kind of stuff. So I, when I go in there, it's a very different place, uh, but I think of, and I, I say that for this because I remember so many ladies in that church who were faithful. Uh, many of them came and served and worked without their husbands really coming and being a part of that. Uh, man, I can remember so many special ladies who taught me in Sunday school and, and really helped me uh, in my growth as a Christian and, and learning about Jesus and all those things, Vacation Bible School. Uh, so ladies, you're special in God's kingdom, and I want you to know that today. We're going to talk about a lady here uh, who we might think about uh, as we think about her her life and where we find her in this passage, maybe she's not so special, but I'm telling you, Jesus thought she was special uh, because he chose to, to come her way and to meet her and to introduce himself to her in a special way. So we're going we're gonna to be looking at John chapter 4. Uh, so stand to your feet as we read from God's Word today. In honor of God's Word, John chapter 4. We're not going to read the whole uh, chapter we're just going to be looking at verses 28 through 42, uh, 28 through 42. We're going to be talking about the whole chapter, so we'll be reading some of that as we go through. But for time's sake, we'll try not to read the whole thing today, okay? Beginning in verse number 28, if you're there, say amen. amen. John 4, 28 says, The woman then left her water pot. Everybody say water pot. Water pot. Went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me. And to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he and he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this for in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. Verse 40, so when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Let's pray. Father, again, you be glorified today. May you be made big and magnified in this place today. God, may all of us see our place today when it comes to you. Lord, maybe for some today it might be for the first time they realize that they need a Savior. They need Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who this woman meets in this passage. And they need him to come and to do just what he did for her and deliver her from her past and her, her circumstances. And God, to give her hope and peace and joy that comes through a relationship and receives living water through Jesus Christ. And God, maybe for some of us here who are saved, we just need to be renewed. We need to be, have our fire rekindled. And God, we need to get back on the right page and serve you in a greater and a better and a stronger way. 
God, whatever you want to do, God, today, you be exactly that for every person here because that's who you are. You meet our needs right where we're at, and we pray that would happen in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Be seated. So we're going to talk today, really looking at verse number 28 uh, that we read there, uh, and that's the thought there. The power, everybody say power. The power of leaving her water pot. Now here's a woman that we're going to see early on. Go, go over to verse 1 of chapter 4. We're going to talk about this. Uh, we're going to try to get through this. We may not get finished with this today, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to talk about um, this story. And in, in John chapter 3, verse 30, uh, John the Baptist is on the scene. And, and uh, the Bible tells us a lot of, uh, you know, some about John the Baptist. He was kind of a crazy dresser, you know, this kind of stuff and everything. He was... Uh, loud and he you know he talked about repentance and and uh, he kind of was uh, against the grain he didn't really uh, you know he was kind of different from everybody else and his he understood his role though in John chapter 3 verse 30 John says this he must increase talking about Jesus he must increase but I must decrease so what's happening here we we'll get down to John chapter 4 verse number 1 listen to what it says Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Now, what's happening here? What's happening is this, is that uh, in the course of time that John has his disciples who follow him. And Jesus has, has called those to follow him. And, and now it's almost like these religious people are trying to work up this competition between John's disciples and Jesus' disciples. And, and so it says, now what's happening is, John said in 3.30, he said, listen, he must increase the, the Messiah, the, the, you know, the, the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world, the one who's, who's, you know, I'm not worthy to undo his shoes down here. That's who John is talking about. He said, listen, he said, Jesus must increase, the one who is coming, he must increase and I must decrease. So that's what's happening in this passage here. We see literally what's happening is, is that, you know, Jesus is, his ministry is beginning to, to blossom and take off. And it says here in this passage that, that his disciples were baptizing more, more, more people than John. Uh, and of course, that's no competition. It's like with us, we don't, we're not in competition against First Baptist or anybody else, are we? We're, this is kingdom work. We're all on the same page. We're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to reach people for Christ. We're trying to, to build the kingdom. And if somebody's doing great, we should say praise the Lord. And we should, you know, we're not, we don't, we're not in competition against anybody else. Our job is to reach people, to build God's kingdom. So John says he must increase and I must decrease. He understood his role uh, in the work of God. But again, down in, in John chapter uh, John four verse one or verse two, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples. So basically, it's just saying that Jesus is not he did not do any baptiz baptism while he's on this earth. He did his, he didn't come to baptize anybody, but he says his disciples did. So his disciples who followed him they baptized people uh, as followers of Jesus. He left Jerusalem, he left Judea, and departed again to Galilee. Now I was reading uh, starting in John chapter one and was reading kind of some background passages coming all the way up to John chapter 4 and I thought it interesting because we went back to the great commission where Jesus in Acts chapter 1 where Jesus said go to Jerusalem uh, Judea Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth if you look at Jesus ministry in John chapter 4 he went to Jerusalem he went to Judea and then he kind of took a u-turn because it would have been better for him not to go uh, the way he did, you know, he had to go through Samaria. Most Jews went around, they didn't go to Samaria because they, remember, Samaritans were not very, they're half-breeds anyway, they didn't think very much of them, so they'd go a different way. But, the, you know, we said he went to Jerusalem, he went to Judea, and then he makes that turn, he goes right down through Samaria. Remember, he says, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus is kind of setting the example or, or he is, you know, as we think about that, it's kind of in a way he's setting that example. But it says here, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. And then verse 4, but he needed to go through where? Samaria. Samaria. Jesus is a Jewish rabbi. He's a teacher. He's the, you know, he is a Jew for sure. And he understands that the Samaritans and in, in the, the understanding of, of people on the earth that day and other Jews is, is these were folks they didn't want to deal with. 
They didn't want to be around. They didn't even want to go through Samaria. They'd go a long way around, you know, almost a different route all the time because they wanted to avoid Samaria. But the Bible says that Jesus needed to go through Samaria. Jesus didn't waste anything. He didn't, he didn't waste any opportunity. He knew that there was somebody there. Why did he go through Samaria? Because he knew somebody there needed to hear from him. They needed to meet him personally. How many times do we avoid places and people because they're not like us? They don't dress like us or look like us. Maybe they don't even agree with us. Jesus says, I need to go through Samaria. And so he travels that way, not the common way of the other Jews, but he, brought, he came right down through Samaria because there was one person, one lady, one woman who needed to meet him and he needed to meet her. She needed something in her life, something in her heart. And Jesus wanted to come and meet her. Now we're talking about the power of leaving her water pot. We're going to get that as we get going here in the message, okay? So I want to talk first of all, first point is this. If you're taking notes, writing this down, we see the contents, the contents of her water pot. The contents of her water pot. Now water pot for uh, folks of that day uh, now there was the big water pots that you find in John chapter 2 where Jesus turned the water into wine. That Remember that says there was like 30 of those at that feast and, and they ran out of wine and, and uh, you know, Mary, Jesus' mother said, listen, you know, whatever he says, do it. Doesn't it kind of, I don't know, I was reading that again and it kind of just, you know, I, I was kind of scratching my head and I well, wonder, now why would she tell him that? What did she know at that point about her son Jesus? What did she know about Jesus that would cause her to say, whatever he tells you to do, you do it? Mary had seen some things, hadn't she? She knew some things as mama, and she had seen some things that, that we don't know about, and maybe, you know, we'll never even know about until we get to glory. But anyway, in this passage, he wanted to come through Samaria. We see the contents of her water pot. The first sub-point under that, the contents of her water pot, we see her position. Or basically we're saying who the world says that this woman is. Who the world says that she is. Now sometimes we get caught up in positions, don't we? We get caught up in who the world says we are. Listen, preachers sometimes can get caught up in who other preachers think they are. You know, you get, you know, you gotta, you get in these, we get in circles of preachers, and man, everybody wants to talk about what's happening in their church, and and you know, nobody's, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, everybody's kind of want to speak evangelistically. You know what I'm saying? You know, we like to say, well, if it, you know, we'll have 50. Something. Well, you know, we had a good crowd Sunday. You know, we don't necessarily say 50. We'll say, you know, the most we've had in, in 20 years, we'll say that's how many we had. You know, we want to speak evangelism. We want everybody to be impressed with what's going on. Here in this passage, we see, first of all, the contents of this woman's water pot. Now, the, this, this woman, again, we talked about John chapter 2 where it was the big ones. This is one that she would carry on her shoulder or one on her. You see them sometimes carrying them on their head. And as she would come and she'd get water and she'd carry it back, for her livelihood and what she needed at her, her house or where she lived and all those things. So first of all, we see her position, her position, who the world says she is or who we find in the passage here. And the first thing we see in verse number 9, it says that she was, of course, she was a woman. She's a woman. Not a big deal. But in, in, in Bible times, ladies, I, I hate to say this, but women weren't, weren't necessarily uh, uh, treated well or thought of as, as somebody high in society or anything like that. Uh, but the Bible says that she was a woman, and not only was she a woman, but she was a Samaritan in verse number 9. It says that as well. Now, this part of her water pot, that we're talking about the contents. What's inside that? In other words, what she carried with her every time she picked that water pot up. We're going to understand this more in just a minute. But every time she picked that water pot up and traveled to that well, Jacob's well, to get water, this was with her. She's a woman She's a Samaritan, somebody that the Jews say is a dog that they don't have anything to do with, wasn't deserving of anything. She's a half-breed. It was a constant reminder of her lack of worth, her worthlessness in the world, if you'd say that, her position. 
And then we know her, not only was she a woman, a Samaritan, but we'll, know, we'll see in just a second as Jesus and her had this conversation, she's not only a woman, a Samaritan, but she's a sinner. She's a sinner. And let me just say this, all of us can identify with that today, right? We understand what that means to be a sinner, to be somebody outside of, of Christ, outside of God, to not have a relationship with the Messiah, the, the one who came for us, who died for us, the one who's coming again that we spent all this time talking about, right? She did not have a relationship with Jesus. She didn't know him. She's a sinner. So all these things in her position reminded her of her lack of worth on this earth. So we see her position. The second thing we see is not only her past or her, her position, but we see her past in verses 15 through 19. And notice the conversation here we see in verses 15 through 19. Now Jesus uh, is, is talking to her he asked her for a drink, remember, as we over in, earlier in the passage. Uh, you know, she comes to this well at, at a very inopportune time or a very strange time. The Bible says she came, it was the sixth hour. You know what? The sixth hour is 12 o'clock noon. It's the hottest part of the day. So most women would not come during this time. Most people would not be there. So she comes, listen, she comes on purpose during that time. She didn't want anybody else to be there. She wanted to come by herself, get her water, get her business done, and get back home while nobody else is there. Why is that the case? Because in the contents of that water pot, she was reminded that she was a Samaritan woman. And then we see in her conversation with Jesus, as we get down to verse number 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, because Jesus had told her about living water. Water that would be forever satisfying. Water that would, that would be a life changer for her. The woman said, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Now remember, why is she coming? Why is she coming there at 12 o'clock? Why is she coming there when no one else is around? You think Jesus knew? Of course he knew. Jesus knew why she was coming. He knew why she came at that odd time when nobody else was around. So what did she see? What did she see when she said, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst? She said, I don't want to have to come to this well anymore. She said, so that I don't have to come here to draw. I don't want to have to come here ever again because when I come here, if I see anybody, they know who I am. They know my past. They know everything about me. So I just want to not have to come here ever again. So if you give me this water that I won't ever be thirsty again anymore, I won't ever have to come here again and be judged for who I am. And then Jesus turns the conversation she sees a way out of her situation. Jesus sees an opportunity for life change. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, verse 17, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you ha now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. Verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say this is, that is Jerusalem, in the, is the place where one ought to worship. Now, let's talk about, again, her position, and then we see her past. Jesus said, here's her past. Here's her real condition. See, we see she's a woman. She's a Samaritan. We, we know on this side that she's a sinner, but here we see in verses 15 through 19, Jesus says, listen, go, go tell your husband to come. Go get your husband and come back. See, that would be kind of the way it was supposed to be, the culture. You know, it, go get your husband and come back. Jesus says, go get him. And she says, listen, I don't have a husband. I know you don't have a husband, Jesus says. You've had five husbands, and the one you're living with right now is not your husband. See, Jesus didn't go around this woman's position or her past or her condition that she's in there. The contents of her water pot was always a reminder of who she was. She was... Again, a woman, a, a Samaritan, a sinner. 
an adulterer, if you would, adulteress. So all that was in this water pot. She carries that with her everywhere she goes. See, so there's some people in our world today that are carrying all this baggage around them. Their water pot, in, in a sense, is full of all kind of things that's going on in their life that just pushes them down and beats them down because the world tells them they're nothing, they're worth nothing. They know themselves, they've made mistakes, they've done wrong, and before God they are sinners. They understand all those things. They don't know how to get past that or get out of that. That's why Jesus has left us here to tell them about the truth. She's got her position in the water pot. She's got her past that's in the water pot. The fact that she's had five husbands and the one she's living with now is not her own. And not only that, but there's some other things that are in her water pot. Her preconceived understandings. Her preconceived understandings or things that she thought within herself. Things that, only things that she understood within her own mind and her thoughts. See, there are a lot of people in our world that have a lot of preconceived understandings about Jesus and about Christianity and about salvation. And our job is to do as Jesus did. Jesus came to this woman. He loved her. He ministered to her. He came to her. And then he, but, it, but then at the, the right point, he comes to the point where he confronts this sin that's in her life. See, she's wanting some kind of, some kind of a way out. She wants an easy way out. You just give me this water, and I won't ever have to come here again. I don't have to meet anybody. Nobody has to see me. I don't have to change it. I just keep where I'm at. I just won't have to come here. I don't have to get judged for who I am in everybody's eyes. But there were some other things we see in verses 20 through 24. The scripture says there, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our father worshiped on the mountain, and you Jews say that it is Jerusalem in the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now this woman, again, this is preconceived notion. What, she, what she's heard from her fathers, her forefathers, whatever, from people around, that the fact that, you know, where she, where she worshiped at was the, the mountain. The Jews, they worship in, the, in Jerusalem where the temple is or where they believe God is. So she kind of changes the subject away from who, where she, her condition right now, her past, and goes to this other stuff about, you know, worship. And then she goes on and she says, The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Basically what Jesus is saying, you're worried about the place when it comes to worship. And the place is not the issue. The place is not what it's about. The heart is what worship is about. See, when we come to, to, to worship today and we sing and we celebrate the Lord and we lift our voices up to him and we magnify him and make him big, it's not about the place. It's about our heart. It's about our relationship. It's about, it's about uh, allowing ourselves to just make the one who's done all for us big and magnify him and bring glory to him and honor to him. That's what worship is. It's declaring his worth to us. Jesus said to her, listen, it's not about the place. It's all about the heart, spirit, and truth. That's the worshiper that God wants. So the contents of her water pot was made up of these things, her position, her past, and her preconceived understandings. See, this woman knew a lot about, to be a, a, a Samaritan, not a Jew, she knew a lot about religion. But her religion had brought her no peace and no satisfaction. So let me just say this to you today. If all you are is religious, a Baptist, Whatever denomination you want to say, you can be a part of every, every denominational church that there is on the face of this earth. And you can be religious from here till the cows come home. 
You can be a good person. You can do good for your neighbor. You can give to charity. You can, give to, you can even give to the church. But without a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will die hopeless and helpless and spend eternity apart from Christ in a place called hell. Amen. That's just the truth. You say, preacher, I don't like that. Hey, I don't like it either. I'm just telling you what the Word says. It's just the truth. This woman, the contents of her water pot, her religious understanding or preconceived understandings that kept her from really uh, finding but the one thing that she didn't expect was is that she told him you listen she talked about worship and then she said well you know what I, I don't really understand all this stuff but one day when the messiah comes he's going to tell us all the things he's going to tell us the truth and jesus didn't bat an eye what he say he said listen the one you're talking to right now i'm I, it's me I'm, I'm the messiah i'm the one that you've been waiting on He's simply saying to her, listen, you don't have to wait any longer. Can I say to you today, if you're looking for peace and joy and, and, and satisfaction and, and you're looking for uh, the truth and you're looking for uh, security and, and life uh, in a way that is different from what the world gives, listen, you don't have to wait any longer. He is here. He has come. And I'm telling you, he came and he lived and he died. He rose again. He ascended. And one day he's coming again to get us, those who know him. The contents of, the, of her water pot. And then we see the second thing. Not only the contents of her water pot, but we see the courage. Everybody say courage. Courage. The courage to leave her water pot. Now notice this and think about this, that her courage that had to come was not going to be found in her religious understanding. She didn't, you know, she talked about the place of worship, she talked about the Messiah, she knew he needed to come. Jesus said, listen, I'm him. Her understanding was not going to be the answer, but her courage was going to come through a person through meeting the Messiah, the one that she had been waiting for, the one she had been longing for, the one she had was still waiting for the courage to leave her water pot. First of all, in verses 25 and 26, Jesus again says, listen, she's looking for the Messiah. Jesus said, listen, don't look any longer. I'm him. The courage to leave her water pot came in the meeting of the Messiah. The courage for you and I to leave that our past and, and the things that have caused us to be defeated all of our life, it's in Jesus Christ. It's in who he is and what he has done. His finished work on the cross. His dying for our sins. His rising from the dead. And him in heaven today praying for us and one day coming to get us. Listen, that's how we leave our contents and our, our water pot. That's how we lay down those things that are past. We lay down our preconceived notions and we lay down our position on this earth. We let all that go and we take Jesus. And that's what she decided she wanted to do. The courage to leave her water pot came in meeting the Messiah. In finding in verses 10 through 15, that living water that Jesus spoke about, that water that would be forever satisfying. Not water that you can drink, but water that the Spirit gives us. The Spirit of God brings living water into us. And not only that, she found that living water in Jesus. Two things that she did. How do we know she found her living, found living water? Well, first of all, she dealt with her sins. She dealt with her sins. That's something we don't like to do, do we? We don't like to repent. We sure don't like to confess that we've done anything wrong. I don't know about you, man, but I, I you know, my wife, she will confront me with it, with something that I, you know, she'll say, "Well, did you do this?" "Oh yeah, I did it," and I did it. One of the things that I've been kind of, um, I've inherited as, you know, being uh, more at home now with working at home on the house and that kind of stuff is, you know, we got a wash and dryer in the old house. And so my job a lot of times is to wash clothes. My wife don't like me to wash her clothes, okay? They don't come out pink or anything like that. I don't have any problem getting in the washer and all those things, but the problem is putting them in the dryer. I'm not supposed to put them in the dryer. And if I do put them in the dryer, it's only supposed to be for 10 minutes on the lowest setting on the washer. Well, sometimes I forget that. She don't watch the video, so it's okay. 
sometimes I don't do it the way she did. Well, she asked me, and you know what? Before I noticed, I said, oh, I, I did exactly like I'm supposed to. I, I did exactly what you said. I did exactly what you said. We don't like to admit that we do anything wrong. I don't like to be wrong. But can I just say this for all of us? Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes we're all wrong, right? We all sin. This woman had to come to terms with the fact that she was a sinner. She dealt with her sins with the Savior. See, that, see I can say all day, this is what I've done, this is what I've done. It's until I, I confess them before the Savior, the one who died for me, the one who paid the price for me. That's what makes the difference. He is the one and the only one who can forgive sin. And you know what? Not only forgive sin, but he forgets sin. He throws them in the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember them against us any more, is what the word says. As far as the east is from the west. I don't know about you, but I need that. She dealt with her sins. And again, verse 28, we know that she dealt with her sins And then verse 28 told us this, and this is the part we talked about to start with. She left her water pot. She left her position, who the world said she was, or in her mind she thought she was. She left her past with her five husbands that she had had, and the one she's living with right now is not her own. She left her preconceived understanding about religion and about worship and about the Messiah. She left all those things. She left her water pot. She dealt with her sin, and then she laid that water pot down because she had met the one she had been waiting for all her life who loved her exactly where she was, helped her to deal with her sins. She left her water pot. And then lastly, lastly, we see the change that came from leaving the water pot. The change that came from leaving her water pot. So we see the contents of the water pot, her past, her, pre, her, her position, her past, her preconceived understandings. We see the courage to leave their water pot, meeting the Messiah, finding living water, dealing with her sins. And then we see the change that came from leaving the water pot. First of all, we see that her position changed. She's not just a woman anymore. See, she went back to that. The Bible says that she went back and she told the men. I wonder why she went to them first. Yes. She went there because, think about this woman. She's had five husbands. She's obviously a lot more popular with the men than she would be with the women, right? Duh. You know, and they are leaders. She goes there and she goes to them first. And she goes there and she begins to talk to them and tell them about what's happening what's happened look at verse 28 again it says she left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men come see a man who told me all things that I ever did she goes and her, her she begins to tell them listen I've met this man he's told me everything that I ever he knows everything about me could this be the Christ the Messiah the one of promise it says, then they went out of the city and came to him. So as soon as this woman goes back, she begins to tell the men what's happened in her life, how he has met her where she was. He's told her all things that she ever did. He, he, is he the Messiah? Could he be the Messiah? And they don't even bat an eye. It says, then they went out of the city and came to him. So she's not just a woman. She's not just a Samaritan. She's not one who just dipped water, worthless Hiding from the world, not a sinner. This woman had found living water. And that living water, the Bible, Jesus told her, said it will spring up out into a fountain of living, of eternal, everlasting life. So what's happened in this woman's life, she met Jesus. And he changed her on the inside. And the thing that happens when we get changed on the inside from Jesus If we follow him and give our life to him, that's not going to stay on the inside. It's going to flow out and overflow, and it's going to affect other people. This woman who was a sinner, 
who was an adulteress, who went to the well to hide from people when nobody else was there. She finds herself going and being a witness, a testifier of meeting the Messiah, the one that she had been waiting for her whole life. The power of leaving her water pot. She carried the well inside of her. Not only did her position change, but her power changed. She had no influence at all. And all of a sudden she goes after meeting Jesus and she tells the men what happened and what happens with them. They immediately, they listened to her. Nobody had listened to her in years. She wasn't worth listening to or hearing about anything. And all of a sudden she meets Jesus and she's got a story to tell and people are ready to hear her and go find him. That's what can happen with us. Listen, the power of leaving our water pot, our past, our preconceived notions or ideas about religion and Christ and all these things, and, and, and our position is, is that we can go with Jesus on the inside and allow him to flow on the outside and see other people come to him as well. That's the goal and that's the job that God has left us to do. That's the power of leaving our water pot is that other people can come to Christ. And that's really what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Let's pray together, okay? Father, thank you so much again for this time, this day, this moment, this message, your word, your spirit that moves and works in our hearts and lives, who changes us just like he did this woman from the inside out. And Lord, we all, we'd all have to testify today that you're still working on us. We're not, we're not where we need to be. We're not where we want to be. But God, you're working on us. Lord, help us to do as this woman, to leave that water pot. Not worry about what the world says or what the world thinks or even what we think about ourselves. But just know that in Christ, you've made us a new creature, a new person. Somebody with influence, somebody with a message and a story to tell. And God, help us to tell that story so that others might come to know Christ and be changed forever. God, you be glorified through this time of decision. In your name we pray, Lord. And all God's people said.